Okay, welcome back to the channel. This is the Procon Geek, and yes, today we're now getting into what you all have been waiting for, which is the actual design of our structural members in Procon. So, yes, we did our layouts, we did our takedowns, and now we're finally going to what we have to do in Procon to actually design all of our members, analyze them, and just come up with the reinforcement drawings for our building. So, without wasting too much time, let's just get into it. Alright, so as you remember from the previous videos, we did our layouts, then we did our sections, and then yeah, we did our load takedowns, where we looked at the roof level and the first floor level, and we said we were going to design for just, we actually did the takedowns for one column, which in this case is labeled column one, which was the worst case scenario. So I went ahead and color coded this column, so the ones in red are the worst case scenarios, which are going to be called the middle columns, which is column one, so these three are going to be identical, they're all going to be column one. Then we're going to have column two, which is in blue, right? All of these are identical being designed using this area that I've shaded in gray. Then we're going to have the ones color coded in purple, which are external columns, which I have also uh, measured. As you can see, uh, it's shaded in gray. Then we have the fourth columns, which are going to be identical. Uh, these ones will mo mostly save the balcony. As you can see, these are in orange or yellow, and these are going to be color coded column number four. So yes, I went and did the takedowns. I think I do have where is my things. Let me just go to where they are, double story. And where are the bases? Yes, I already did the takedowns for column one, column two, column three, and column four. So I do have some of the sheets open. I think we did column one together in the previous video. And we came up with the loads. And if you remember, I said we're roughly gonna need a 900 by 900 millimeter base, or so 1000 by 1000 millimeter base. So, as you remember, the thing is you do your calculations, all of them. If you want this shit, hit me up and we'll see what we can do. So, this is the middle results. Then you get your results. You get your loads which are unfected. Then you get the total load. Then you, you have your codes for BS or sands. Then using sands, you get your load. You have the affected loads now, the dead load, the live load, and then live load. Uh, we need this because it's different. You're going to see it as we go. Some of these programs require us to enter the affected loads while some of them require the unaffected loads so obviously once we did the preliminary design of size in our foundations the next step is to now design the foundations so to design these foundations what i am thinking is uh, since we already have column one two three and four we might also end up with four types of bases so we can name this b1 b2 b3 and b4 whilst the columns we name them c1 c2 c3 and c4 so to get started with designing our columns obviously now this is the time where you go to procon you obviously you want to start off at home and then you go to concrete and under concrete you have to choose base and yeah let's do that let's just do that and see what we get so there we have our interface that's open and it's now time to design the base or the foundation so let's get started so as you can see or if you can remember from my previous videos this is the default page you get when you open the base or the concrete base design module this is what it greets you with where you have your input tab as the first tab that greets you so what we're gonna do is we're gonna design the first foundation for column one the f yes the base which is going to be housed in column one and that base is as i told you the base which will be for these columns which are in red so let's see let's see let's start entering now so as we remember from uh, our takedowns the preliminary base is 0 0.83 by 0 0.83 so just rounding up we're just going to say 0 0.9 so all you have to do is go to a just key in uh, 0 0.9 then the next step is well 0 0.9 and then if you remember when I was doing the layouts, the preliminary sizing of our columns, we said they're going to be 300 millimeters by 230 mils. So that's going to be 0 0.3 by 0 0.23. So this is C and this is going to be D. And then since we don't have any eccentricity, E and F, we're going to leave them like that. And then the stub column height is going to be 1.5. If you remember um, when we were doing this, I think I showed you it's going to be 1.5. So 1350 plus 150, that's definitely going to be the height of the stub. So it's going to be 1.5. So we go back. Then the base depth or the thickness of the base. Uh, first, I think we're just going to put it 0 0.3 for now. 
And then the soil cover, the soil cover, let's just go back. What is the soil cover? The natural ground level is at minus 0 0.300 and the top of the base is there. So this is the dimension. So it's 1,200 for our soil cover. So our soil cover is going to be 1.2. That is cool. And the density of our concrete, if you already know by now, it should be 24. The soil density is 18. Then the soil friction angle, soil friction angle is 22, then the base friction constant is 0 0.5. So judging that uh, base is going to be underground and also we're going to have a mild exposure. The cover we're going to use is 50 for the top bars or the outer edge or the outer cage, outer layer of our bars. And then for the inner cage or the inner layer, it's going to be 60. So we repeat the same for the bottom still so it's going to be 60 as well for the inner cage and then this one is going to be 0 0.9 this is for overturning the ultimate limit state factor live load factor when we're dealing with overturning for self-weight and since we're going to be using um all right i think that's the other thing i forgot first thing you want to do is go to file say design and then choose the design code you're using so we're going to be using subs so this is what we're going to do choose subs as well and then you're going to click ok and then with subs the ulslf self weight just remember it's 1.2 then the maximum so serviceability uh serviceability limit state bearing pressure is as you remember from my sheets from the geotechnical investment it's 750 so we're going to make sure it's 750 and then this is what you're going to key in here what you do is you're just going to put your ones i'll go into the theory much later but then what you want to do is you want to put one in one if you're dealing with subs or bs uh we will do that in a video but this time i'm just going to show you how the process of design this then the fcu for the base this is the characteristic strength for the base in our case uh from what i use let me just go and show you right where are my concrete notes where are my concrete notes concrete notes concrete notes so for foundations these are the minimum the minimum it's 25 megapascals or 26 millimeters and then let's see if we're going to be using columns it's going to be 40 so what i'm going to do in ground beams as well it's 30 so this is it's this is the minimum this is the minimum so for me what i'm gonna do is i want this is more of you just choosing what quality you want on site so i'm gonna go with 30 then for the columns as well uh yes let's go with grade 40 then this is gonna be 460 let's make sure that my concrete knots the columns is grade 40 so yeah we're good to go so there's 40 and then the characteristic strength of the steel we're gonna be going with high yield strength steel so it's 460 then for the load case i'm just gonna go with the worst case scenario where you have the dead load and the live load applied throughout the structure 100 100 so we're just gonna say one and then what we're gonna do is just put in brackets live load all right plus the dl 100 so that you know what you were doing so we're gonna have since we only have one column so the lim lf uls over 10 in when it comes to the live loads whether it's bs or sands is going to be 1.6 then lf uls is going to be 1.6 as well then we still have one column we don't have two columns then this time around is going to be 0 0.9 and then in this case we're going to put 1.2 then the live load let's see what the live load is all right the live load the live load 336.05 all right let's go 336.05 and then the dead load is 179.60 so right that's it this is how you enter the loads for first step. so now i think uh, the next thing that you want to do is click on design so let's do that and see what we get all right now that we have our data entered into procon the next thing we do after we enter everything since we don't have any errors showing up at the bottom the next thing we do is just click on design so this is you know Procon just it's it's a computer it does it instantaneous for you it's like a millisecond thing so after you click your design it gives you the results so as you want to check as a rule of thumb if you don't find anything red you're good but if anything is in red 
you probably are in the deep end okay you need to restart your design so for me i'm lucky everything is good so it seems we are not failing when it comes to soil pressure at the ultimate number state we have 965 and we're good to go and for but the most critical thing we where we do not want to fail is the serviceability limit say so under the current conditions the pressure that we are exerting is 666.63 and the maximum allowable for us is 770 under serviceability limit state it always doubles uh in respect when it comes to ultimate limit state so under the same factors but in this case we are passing when it comes to ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state if we were failing in any of this it was going to paint them as red so we're good to go and then for the self Safety factors. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. The safety factors, whether it's a limited state or the ultimate limit state, all of them are above 100. So we're good to go. If everything is above 100, percent it means your thing is safe and it's strong as you know, strong as a horse. And then for the design moment, it's going to be 41.81. That is the maximum moment that's going to be T. But remember, the other thing that I did not mention to you is that we do not have any moments. We do not enter any moments because the other assumption that we did when we're designing our columns due to subs or under sands is we're assuming that they're not going to be transferring any moments to the ground. Yes, any moment is going to be taken care of by our ties, which are there and the walls as well. We'll be bracing our columns, so there's no need for them to transfer any moments to be rigid. So we're going to, we're assuming they're pinned. Okay. And then the next thing, it also shows us that at the top, we don't need any steel because the design moment is zero. Reinforcement need is zero. Design moment is zero as well. And the Y reinforcement is zero. Then when it comes to the linear shear, oh, VC is 0 0.359. That is the maximum shear. This concrete section, which is at 0 0.3, is able to provide but do we have any shear no we don't the shear is zero and then also the shear which is occurring to this concrete is also zero but it's able to handle a maximum of up to 0 0.401 so this is good we don't have any shear we don't have any punching shear so our design is superb it is amazing let me see if i can actually change this to 0.25 um seems now we have a bit of shear in 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 our one of our faces in the Y face we have 0.265, but when it comes to everything else we are still good to go. So we can actually save on concrete and make them 250 millimeters thick. But wait 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 wait. Uh, let me see let me see what is the max minimum size of yeah 0.25 is okay. So let's also see if we can put it to you know, 0.2 and if we're still good. Okay, we're not good at point two. We have a failure when it comes to shear. So the minimum we can use is 0.25. So we're saving the contract, the contract, no, the client some concrete. So that is good. So we're going to save it to 0 0.25. Then the next thing that you have is your calculation sheets. So this basically just give you a summary of the calculations. If you need to take them to someone, if someone needs to verify yo what you call this yo shit so in this case let's just say first shit number we're just gonna call it uh 2020 today is what 6 april it's tanya's birthday man Woo! i have to say happy birthday to her then job number we're just gonna call it actually this is the date so let me just call it project 2020 project oh no first shit number it's it's one i'm sorry about that then job number it's going to be 20 it's going to be project let's just call it project 2020 project 2020 yes we're good to go then job title it's double story house the client it's uh let's just call it d then the calculations are by or let's just put it tanya let's just say tanya and the calculations are going to be by me so which is by the procon geek and checked by let me put um what's his name it's engineer vincent yeah engineer vince vince is the guy checking this and we're just gonna say 604 slash 2020 604 slash 2020 and we get to go so yes right we're good to go you, you can just say set the date it says the day for you and you're good to go so this is what it's going to look like so if you want to print this out you can print it out now nitro pdf let's print it out so that you guys can have um 
Let's see where are the red geek tutorials double story. Then we're gonna go to where our base is and this is gonna be column one. Uh, cock shit, cock shit. Save it and automatically there it prints it out for us as you can see. So if this is what you can now send to someone, Project 2020 Double Story House, the client is Tanya, she has a birthday today, uh, Procon Geek, checked by Engineer Vince, and yo, yes, there you have, so someone can follow through the calculations that you did to come up with this. Then now, last but not least, what we are going to do is we are now going to move on and uh, look at the bending schedule. Alright, so to look at the bending schedule, all you have to do is now click on bending schedule, which is the last part of this, the whole design when you're designing the bases. So now when you go to the bending schedule, the first thing you want to change is the schedule file name. So in this case, we are designing the base, which we're going to call B1, which will be housing column 1. So we're going to call this B1C1. Alright, and then straight up next thing you want to do is you want to detail this basis now so procon is proposing y16 is at 350 spaces at in the x direction and um y16 is at 250 in the y direction so that gives us three bars in the x so this is the x okay this is the x direction and uh four bars in the y so you know if this is okay it's good it's a good design but when you come to detailing so if you look at the code of practice you need to have all your codes of practice with you so yes there is the code of practice that deals with the design of reinforced concrete then there's a code of practice that deals with detailing of the reinforcement of concrete so this is a very cool book so it kind of gives you guidelines as to how you detail things you know give a certain situations the maximum amount of steel you need to put where you need to put your steel and if you have certain type of dimensions or how you this is how you detail and everything like that so in our case it says that when you detail in the foundations you want to keep a little bit of symmetry so this is good to have three y16s and then four y16 is a good design because the entered steel is greater than the required steel but then you want to keep them a, a little bit of symmetry it also helps for the workmanship as well so you want to in this case you would want to have since the minimum for one side is four it's better to have it as four bars in one direction than four bars in the other direction so the best thing you're going to do is when you have this is four i 16 to 250 in this direction so you're just going to put them as well uh what do you want to do you want to change this to let me put a 300 what do you get four yes so what you can do is so that you you're good to go what you only have to do is just make sure that you put also y16s at 300 in the x and then y16s at 250 in the y so that you have four bars in the x and then four bars in the y so then you're good to go so as long as you entered steel is greater than steel that is required and the nominal steel you're good to go so the next thing you want to do is you want to change this is not a stub column it's a continuous column so you want to put c and then it's saying for the starters the main bars are 16s but then if you go to the bottom it says check the starter bar sizes with column design so that is what you want to do you want to check the size of your starters which procon is providing you are will be the same as the ones that you get during column design. so the next thing that you would want to do sorry you make this video a little bit long but then this is the best thing so that you get an understanding of what you have to do the next thing is you obviously want to open the column design module so it's as simple as going back to proco and then going to rectangular column and then once you go to rectangular column you want to key in so in our case uh it's 300 and then b is 230 i've already explained that so dx delta prime x is the effective depth in the x direction so in our case the cover to the columns the minimum is 30 uh, assuming mild exposure then assuming 10 millimeter diameter lengths the next thing you want to do is that comes 30 plus 10 that's 40 then assuming y12 y16 bars to the center of the steel you need 8 so give or take you can choose 45 or 50 or you can put 48 so in this case let me just put 48 48 as well so we can be accurate as well and then the length of the starter columns is going to be 1.5 as you already know as you've already seen where is where is it 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 right let's go to the sections let's go to the sections it's going to be 1.5 yes it's going to be 1.5 as you know 150 plus 1 350 that's going to be 1.5 
Then the next thing you want to enter is the FCU. So we're going to have Forte, Forte, Forte. Then the FY is going to be 460 because high mount still. Then as for bracing, you want to make sure oh, you tick this because we are our columns, they are walls and they are ties. So this is going to be braced by these. So unless if it's five stories or more, then you need to put sheer walls and everything to brace your columns. Otherwise, you would need to tick and bra braced off because you would if you don't have any sheer walls and your building is five meters, five stories. I mean, you don't your columns are definitely not braced. And as for the end conditions, as I told you, we're assuming we're designing for pinned conditions. Our columns are not going to be transferring any moment, so we choose pinned, pinned, pinned effective length factor this is calculated automatically based on whether your columns are braced or pinned since there are no errors the next thing you want to do is enter the load cases the description this is going to be the live load plus the dead load at 100% right 100% and then in this case P the P so we don't have any moments please remember that because we assumed we're designing for pinned columns so in this case let's see the load that we enter now when it comes to columns is different from the basis you do not enter the total unfected loads you come and you enter the total affected load that is the sum of the dead and the live load including the self weight of the column you need to it's, it doesn't calculate it for itself so you need in this case this is why we need the sheet you need 672.653 so let's go back to the columns that's 670 and also make sure the design code sorry sure it's subs so always make sure it's subs uh, or whatever design code you use there's so many codes even if you're in india you can use your code i'm sure it's this so design code i think in india they use is yes the indian standards hong kong standards euro codes cp code of practice bs american constitute everything is there so now we need the load for the column it's going to be let's see let's see let's see sorry column one six seven two point six five three six seven two where is six seven two that's where is six seven two where do i enter all right there we go six seven two point i'm sorry six five three six five three right we good then the next thing we want to do is just key in design they, it gives us the design but we're going to talk about this when we're designing our columns but the most important thing where you want to go is just go to the banish sheet you'll get these calculation sheets creates for them for you because you want to verify the size of your starters so the banish edge you it is proposing one two three four four y 16 bars so if you check let's compare you need four y 16 bars in your corners and Procon was proposing 4y16s bars in our corner, so we're good to go. The starter design, I've just checked it, but we're gonna do the column design separately now. And then the lap length factor, you wanna make this, oh, it's it's a, it's what? It's a member in compression, so the minimum is 40, so actually Procon was right, you just wanna put 45. Then the length diameter, I am going to use 10s instead of uh, 18s. This is automatically calculated for you given the section you provided the number of links. I'm just going to make them. These are going to be fixed in links, by the way. I'm just going to make them five. And column. Let's just make sure it's C1. And for the first bar mark, we're just going to make sure it's one. Then the configuration of our bars, shape code 35 or 38. I'm good with that. We're going to look at that more when we start detailing the column. So now I think everything is okay. Everything is good. What else do I need? Uh, um, yes, I can now click on generate my schedule. Okay, before we generate, let's just see this in 3D. So never mind the funny links. Actually, I think, let me just, let me just put them back at 3 so whatever happens so don't mind this little glitch because it spaces them on its own but when you're fixing them on site you just need to push them down so the good thing is you can visualize this now before you actually take it aside this is what your base will look like four bars in the x direction four bars in the y then you have your main bars at the corners and then you have a three links so you're good to go so after you two done the next thing you want to do is generate schedule all right let's generate our schedule and there you go voila it generates a schedule so what it did it went to uses t4400 i'm a terminator by the way documents ps2 program program t data tier so it created a file called b1c1 which is okay so to access that file all you have to do is i have to go b1c1 and let's see let's see let's see there you have it there you have your 
band is scheduled generated for you and this is what we're going to use to detail and provide the steel drawings for our contractor and for our client so as you can see we have just designed base one column one um yeah we good so base one is going to be 900 by 900 with 4y16s 4y16s and uh 4y16s for our starters and three 10 millimeter dial links for our for us fixing links so this is it ladies and gentlemen for designing a foundation i think we're gonna do another one and then we'll see if we will do all four of them before we move on to designing our column so this is it this was a little bit longer than usual but for the other videos since we now have an idea of what we will be doing we're just gonna rush through them so that we get to the columns but this is introduction to foundations hope you enjoy it new music and stay fresh stay geeky I'm out.